then wear green. Um, I want to look at the back of your um, missalette and let's talk about some of the events coming up. We are continuing to collect breakfast cereal and children's coats. The coats will be storing and cleaning for next year. If you look on your event calendar, every Wednesday at 6 p.m. we do our prayer concerns and Bible study. And I am happy to say that we were able to get chosen, so we will continue with season four, episode one of Chosen this Wednesday. Um, next, in two weeks, March 31st, we'll be doing Easter Sunday. Make sure you bring flowers for the cross. And also, after Easter Sunday service, we'll be doing an egg hunt outside for all the children, and uh, we'll have some uh, goodies for those kids. Saturday, April 6th, is our uh, Global Methodist Church One Mission Society planning service. If you're going to attend that, it's from 9 until 12, you must pre-register. Uh, and you can talk with Dusty or uh, Norm or myself, we can help with that. Yeah, if you don't know how to register or how to register yourself, please call me. I'll register you for you. Yeah. And that's for global and local uh, mission activities that are going on. Saturday, April 13th, we're going to do a spring cleanup day. So we're asking everyone to come, and that's going to be at 9.30. Um, we'll start out with a little uh, biscuit breakfast, coffee, juice, whatever. And then we will be putting mulch outside, cleaning up the outside area, um, and then also cleaning on the inside. And that'll last till we get it all done, depending on how many people show up. Sunday the 14th will be our second Sunday social. We'll be doing coffee and pastries after the service. Tuesday the 16th of April is our um, small admin council. So if you're admin council, that's your day. And then the last of the April is our spring sing. That'll be on Sunday, April 28th. And that's gonna be here in Middleburg <coughs> at 4 p.m. Mm -hmm. Are there any other announcements? We're contemplating having a tenebrae service on Good Friday, like we've had in the past. If I went to ask for it, if there's enough interest in it, we'll have a Good Friday service. So we'll have them both confirmed next week, if, if there's enough interest to have. So are you going to send out an email to people and ask and have them respond to you? Yes, yes. Okay, and explain why. But like, like we've done in the past, a tenebrae for Good Friday. So that's pending right now. Okay, so more information will come out about that. Yes. Anything else? Okay, if you would look in your uh, missile under your opening prayer and join me in your opening prayer. We praise you for gathering us for worship as we start this service. May you be glorified from beginning to end. Fill our hearts with your joy and peace so that we may grow in faith and in the knowledge and love of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If you will join in hymn number 362, Nothing But the Blood.
all join together. I believe in God, God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And so 
So today is an invitation to that time of confession. And so I invite you now that we might begin this time in silence. Would you join me now? Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may from this day forward serve and follow you, walking in newness of life. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. As we continue in a time of silence, thanking God for his forgiveness. God assures us of his pardon and his forgiveness. Blessed be the Lord, for he has heard the sounds of our pleadings. The Lord, the Lord is our strength and our shield. In him our hearts trust, so we are helped. And our hearts exult, and with our songs we give thanks to him. Amen. As we come to our time of prayer, please note the prayer concerns that are on the back of the bulletin, and these that have been added. Today we want to pray for Teddy Whittington. This is a child that is very sick and the parents have <coughs> requested prayer. We also want to lift up prayer for Dallas Green, who is battling pneumonia. We also want to pray for Marshall Dixon, who has suffered a heart attack. Is there anyone else to be added? Traveling mercies for all our congregation that is traveling on this week. Traveling mercies for all of our congregation who are out of town today. Would you bow your heads now as we go to our Heavenly Father? Merciful God. We cannot stand in our strength alone. And just as the psalm says in Psalm 51, that it's not burnt offering, it's not the things of this world that you desire from us, but rather our confession, rather, as the psalm says, a broken and contrite heart. For Lord, if you counted iniquity, who could stand? And so today, we thank you for your forgiveness. We praise you for the renewal that it brings. We thank you, O oh God, that just as you are now renewing the earth with your almighty hand, with the touch of spring as we see the trees once again, begin to bud out, the grass turning green, the flowers, the warm air. It's a reminder, oh God, that just as you can bring life from death, eternal life, and did so by the victory of Jesus Christ over the cross and the grave, so, oh God, you can lift us from the darkness, from the things of this life that are not holy and healthy. And Father, today as we pray these things, we also remember the struggles of the world. We pray for the places of unrest and war and evil and famine. Lord God, we pray for you to be at work in this nation of ours, a nation founded under God, a 
nation of God that is slipping away from faithful obedience to your word in worship. And Lord, as we pray these things today, we ask that you would also draw our spirits closer to you. And Lord, may our lives be in keeping with your word to us in the Holy Scriptures. Father, today we pray for all of the names on our prayer list and for those that have been added. And Lord God, may we hear you clearly today. Your love, your grace, your mercy. And may we truly know that we have been in the house of the Lord. And now, oh Lord, we pray together as Jesus gave us the example. Our Father, Our Father who, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our hymn is Christ for the World We Sing, number 568.
Jesus multiply the loaves and the fish. We pray also that you would multiply this offering and that through the work of this church with Christ as the head, that others would come to know your saving grace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And everybody say it. Amen. Amen. Let us be seated.
also in another place, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus appeared up on up prayers, offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned of obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of men. I see the children up at the front for a time with them. Faith and the belief of a child. 
Bless them, I pray. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thanks for coming up, guys.
And God the Father answers, I've done that. I glorified my name at your baptism. I glorified my name when I spoke, when you were transfigured on the mountain with Moses and Elijah. But I will do it again, and he speaks, and the people there do not even recognize the voice of God. But one day, they will hear it, and they'll hear it clearly. And he makes reference again to being lifted up from the earth, which is reminiscent of the book of Numbers, chapter 21, where Moses puts the bronze serpent on a pole, and the folks lift, look up and are saved when they do, as with this act of faith, that that serpent was lifted up. So he's saying, I will be lifted up on the cross. So brothers and sisters, I explain that to you as we hear how God wants to speak to us today because those who save their life will lose it. And those who hate this life in this world will keep it for eternal life. So are you losing it today? Would you bow your heads with me? Oh God, we hear your message to us today and we know, Lord, that at times we get too focused on the here and the now and we forget that we are going to be with you for all of eternity. And so, Lord, help us to hear and to understand today how it is that we are to lose our life in you. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. It seems that there was a farmer in the neighborhood that was known for liking to clear some land. He liked to do this every so often. He liked to do it himself. Would rent his own bobcat and cut the trees down and see what he could scrape up and create a windrow at the end of the area. Sort of like a big old brush pile. In this particular time when he is clearing the land, there is a rather large dead tree. When he cuts it down, and he cannot loosen the stump, he tries and tries, but can't do it. Digs around it. It's that little bobcat getting it, trying to get it loosened up, not working. So he decides out of frustration, he's going to get him some dynamite. And you can do that in those days. So he went and bought him two sticks of dynamite. Now, if you've ever done anything with dynamite, you know it, that you don't need to. And as he gets back to the area, here comes one of the new neighbors along. And this new neighbor did not have any farming experience. And so Bob, we'll call him Bob, decides he's going to show off a little bit. And so when he gets there, the new neighbor pulls up. And he said, man, what you doing? He said, I got to blow this stump out of the ground. He said, oh, really? I've never seen that done before. He said, you just watch. Well, he puts one stick of dynamite on one side of the stump and the other stick on the other side. Make sure that the line is long enough. He lights both of them. They back up a good distance from it. <clears throat> Light after he's lit it. That stump, when that dynamite went off, it rose a good hundred feet in the air, did an arc, and came down boom, right on the cab of Bob's truck. <laughs> As we say in the country, squashed it flat. 
Well, he just loses it. And he is just fussing and carrying on and stomping his feet. He pulls his hat off and flings it on the ground. And this new neighbor's just watching him. And he's known to be one of those people that can find something positive in everything. And so he looks at Bob and he looks at the squash truck with the big old stump sitting on top of it. And he said, you know, Bob, with a little more practice, you'll be landing those things in the bed of the truck every time. <laughs> Losing it. What is it that God wants to see in our life in terms of losing it? Well, there was a missionary, Charles Thomas, or known as C.T. Studd, was born in a wealthy family in England. This was back in the 1800s. He was an excellent cricket player, for some of you that may have seen him play cricket on television. He attended prestigious Cambridge University. And while he was there, of course, he played cricket for Cambridge. And he led the cricket team to victory over the Australian cricket team. It was a big deal, a big to-do. He was well known because of this. He was a good athlete. I won't talk about the athletics that we saw last night between State and Carolina. <laughs> but he was a good athlete. He could have continued playing. But CT came in contact with a name that you probably have heard if you've ever done any study of Christianity and the evangelist of that era, and that was Dwight L. Moody. And he became a Christian under the preaching of Dwight Moody. And even though he was athletic and he was rich, CT and six others out of Cambridge University became known as the Cambridge Seven missionaries working for Christ. And CT went into the mission field in China with Hudson Taylor. He stayed there for a while until sickness brought him back to the U.S., and then in 1885, he sailed to China, spent several years there as a missionary, then to India in about 1906, and then the remaining years of his life, he spent in Africa. And he is quoted as saying this, if Jesus Christ is God and died for me, then no sacrifice can be too great for me to make for him. That's the kind of losing your life that Jesus is referring to. That if you are all in, that if you are prepared to follow wherever it leads. Now, brothers and sisters, I can't say that God can't call somebody from among us to go and be a missionary somewhere. I can't say that God can't call from among us someone to be a preacher or an evangelist, but I can say that we can lose our life every day. At the kitchen table, first thing in the morning, with a cup of coffee or a glass of water or something and studying his word, 
and being a prayer warrior and keeping a list of those in our families, those that we work with, those that we live close to, and on and on the list goes. You can lose your life in prayer and in reading his word. I'm not talking about you don't have to do it all day long. I'm saying that with some discipline to take that time and that opportunity to daily lose your life in that way. There are also the acts of charity that many of you are so very good at, of loving and caring in the name of Jesus, because you never know the small actions, as Jesus said, giving even a cup of cold water in my name. That's part of losing your life for Jesus when you can get outside of yourself. When you don't let your own concerns or maybe even a few aches and pains and difficulties keep you from seeing the opportunities that are around us every day to be the hands and feet of Christ, to lose our life in that way, to be loving and serving in his name. The word says, whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. Because what we have as the people of God right now, in this moment, is today. We're not guaranteed about tomorrow, and we can't borrow from it. And we can't change yesterday. That's why the forgiveness and seeking God's forgiveness and being made a right, starting over, almost like with a brand new sheet of paper, day by day, hour by hour, to lose our life in dedication to God. God sees that, rewards that, and it matters. It matters how we lose our life and what we lose it for. Losing it not in a negative way, but in a positive way, immersing yourself in the love of God. You know, over the years, the greatest challenge is to convince people that God truly loves them. Loves them. Really loves them. You see, when that fire of love takes, takes hold in a soul, and they begin to understand just what it means with the empty tomb and Jesus being willing to go through death to life eternal. And that it's an individual plan, not a group, of losing life. You know, as it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 23, we preach Christ crucified, the greatest act of love there has ever been. God didn't have to lay down his life, and it was planned. God planned it all. And the same one who spoke life into your soul it's the same one that will greet you in heaven. Are you losing your life for Almighty God today? Would you pray with me? Oh Lord, how you love us with a love that is so strong 
and so pure. And for all of those who feel lonely, for all of those, Lord, who are not convinced today of your love, whether they're here in the sanctuary or they're watching our service, oh God, speak to hearts in these very seconds. Help us to know that every opportunity, every smallest act, every prayer, is an opportunity to be in service to you. Oh Lord, help us to lose our life in you that we might find it. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn today is Pass Me Not, O Gentle Saviors, number 351. Would you stand as we sing together? Your labor is not in vain.